contracting of the entirety of the travel uh, of the travel is going to be pointless. That's yep. So one half k x squared. I think we're now ready to stick numbers in. I think we'll make it simpler. Uh, I am going to go with just rounding off. So the sine of theta is 0.8. The cosine of theta is 0.6. So we have, this was 1600 plus 40x minus is 0.3 times 50 times 0.6. Nine. So nine times 40 is 360 minus 9x equals, and then k was 30, so it's most 15x squared. Uh, let's see, 40, so minus 31x minus 1, 2, 40. That must have made a terrible error. I'm not supposed to be doing. So x equals 31 plus or minus the square root of 31 squared minus 4 times 15 times negative 1240 divided by 31. I have every two answers. answer. Uh, and what is the negative just for fun? Negative 8.12. 8.12. So it's not compressing quite as far because well, energy is being taken out of the box and transferred into the ramp itself. Presumably, the ramp feels just a little bit warmer. Questions to hear. Uh, if you've got an extension on your taxes, they're due at midnight today, right? <laughs> oh, the 27th, there we go, 27th. I was thinking we'd already signed the test. That's test 1B.
Well, there's nothing else. The quiz on eight and nine homework quiz on November third. Yep, November third. Does the test include chapter eight? The test on coming up? Yeah. No, it does not include chapter eight. This is material for the last test. What test is more test one? Uh, Test 1B officially is chapter 5 through 7. November what? You said it, please? November 3rd, Tuesday. Or Paulins? Pardon? Or Paulins? Quite possibly. You said uh, 5 through 7? The test, yes. I was about to say, look at the old test and it'll tell you which chapters it is, but not necessarily because we've had three different books for this course over the, uh, over the last nine years. And when is test 1B? When is that? That is November, uh, sorry, October 27th. I scroll in the green off the margin right there. So a little under two weeks. So it's uh, a week from this coming Tuesday is the test. Yes. The forces. Free energy. I'll throw some master sets in there at some point, but uh, so you can begin working on the master sets. I'm still recovering from fall break. So. All right, questions before we start on chapter, what I think is chapter nine. Now the ski problem really would be difficult to solve with the stuff we have from chapters five through seven because the forces are constantly changing. Even though the weight is constant, the normal force is constantly changing throughout that. And so to be able to use Newton's laws to come up with the 31.3 meters per second at the bottom, we would have had to know the shape of the slope. Now, let's deal with the other side of that collision. And so when you're dealing with collisions, momentum is the way to go. And then we'll bring the energy back into it. So we have the force on A from B is equal to the negative of the force on B from A. Newton's third law, short form. And we talked about during that collision that the displacement was the same, which led us into this whole idea of work and energy. And now we're gonna take the other side of that, the fact that they touch each other for the same amount of time. is mass times acceleration. Mass of A times the acceleration of A, that's dt, is equal to mass of negative mass of B times the acceleration of B dt. Since we are dealing with differentials here, it probably would be nice to take an integral. I am assuming that the mass is constant. We will generalize that in a moment. 
And what is the integral of acceleration with respect to time? Velocity. Velocity. Darn close. So as I said, from some initial time to some final time. But that should be a final time. Instantaneous or? You said spontaneous? No. Or instantaneous? Yeah. Uh, no. Change. That's the word. It's the change. Yeah, I guess generically, acceleration with respect to time is, is velocity. But since we are taking, you know, there are limits here, it does end up being change in velocity. The velocity of A is equal to the negative mass of B times the change in velocity of B. I'm now going to write out this change here, the mass of A times V, A final, minus the mass of A times V, A initial, equals negative mass of V times V, V final, minus V, V initial. We distribute. Mass of A, V, A final, minus mass, ooh, there's some awkward transitioning there, that shouldn't be there, minus mass of A, V, A initial, equals negative mass of B, V, V final, plus mass of B, V, V initial. At this point, physicists got tired of writing. They said, well, and V shows up again and again, so why don't we just come up with a single letter? We'll call it P. We'll let P equal MV. Why not P? So we have P A final minus P A initial equals negative P V final plus P B initial. So now let's get all the initial terms on one side, all the final terms on another. So I'm going to bring PAI over to the right and PBF over to the left. And so I have PA final plus PB final equals PA initial plus PB initial. From a notation point of view, these are all lowercase p's. If I bring add them together to get find out the total amount of P in the situation, at that point, generally textbooks will go for a capital P. So this officially is a capital P. I will float back and forth, especially since my capital P's and lowercase P's look pretty much the same. But textbooks do differentiate, or some do. So whatever P is, the total initial is equal to the total final. And that, of course, makes physicists' hearts go all a Twitter because we have another conservation law. Conservation of P. And of course, they need a fancy name for it. And they call it momentum. So at this point right here, this is equal to the change in P for A, the change in momentum of A. Recognize that starting at this point right here, that is equal to this. In other words, the integral of, well, basically n times A, the integral of F dt is equal to the change in momentum from some initial to some final time. And of course, this has a special name, other than just change of momentum. And the most obscure clue I, I think I ever give is that 
If someone suddenly buys you flowers, that is called <laughs> if only, if only a physicist had done that. Descartes, what a curmudgeon. Yeah, I, I assume most of you are not well versed in 70s perfume commercials. It's called Impulse. You can find the commercial on, on YouTube. I don't think I have the link for 251 to see it, but I do have the link somewhere. So sometimes a uh, question is, uh, what is the impulse applied to an object? And some students get sort of flummoxed over thinking, oh, this is what I need in order to find, I need to know the force and the time in order to be able to find the impulse. Well, maybe, or you're, you just need enough information to find change of momentum. Either one works. Let's talk about units. The units of momentum. Well, based on the equation right there, what are the units of momentum? Kilograms per meters per second. Is it kilograms meters per second? Or did you throw another word in there? That, no, I didn't. Okay. So kilogram meter per second. Suppose we went with this equation right here, because change of momentum is better have the same units as force times time. What's another set of units that would also work? Ooh, Ed's disease. What? <laughs> One of my early years here, uh, I thought a student called Ed, a great guy, down engineer. Uh, but I would ask questions like that, and he would always throw per in there between the, the letters. Per means division, and you're not dividing here. So I called it Ed's disease, and I called it Ed's disease for years. Uh, and then at some point, after going through that, found out that his daughter was in one of my classes. As I'm <laughs> making her dad famous-ish. Uh, so anyway, we're, obviously, drop the perm. Right, Newton seconds. Yeah, Newton seconds. There is no single word unit for momentum. Now, it depends on how much you write. Some students have no problem writing kilogram meters per second. Matter of fact, they prefer to do that. Some students will write Newton seconds every time. Some will just flip back and forth between the two. And then the other option is you make up your own unit. Now, the rules, if you're going to make up your own unit, are, since it is not internationally accepted, to my knowledge, you have to define it at the beginning of a test. If you define it at the beginning of the test and that, or a quiz, you write it up at the top, and I assume it covers the entire test or quiz. If you write it from just a problem, I assume it's computer science speak, it's a local variable and it only applies to that problem. <clears throat> Whatever unit you make up, it does not actually have to be a, a letter from our alphabet. Uh, do not use any letters that are already used. Do not use capital N. If your name is Nick and you want to honor yourself by using a capital N, sorry, that's been taken. Capital J, it's already been taken. Capital W, already taken. One that I don't think has been taken yet is a capital D. So this is what I use. Uh, other students do their own or go with one of those. I am defining it as a kilogram meter per second. D for Descartes. Descartes did some of the early work with it. I went to a talk once where someone actually referred the letter B for Becquerel. Not Becquerel. He's a radiation guy, I think. There were some other physicists who did work with us that he wanted on it. Yeah, I think therefore I am guy. So, as long as it's there. And if I erase the board and I start look up there and I erase that first, then this now is wrong. It's only true because I defined it right there. So, Questions to hear before I talk about 
the potential contradiction I have on the board. All right, here's the potential contradiction. At, right here, unclean momentum is conserved. Right here, I'm saying, hey, we can have a change in momentum. If momentum is conserved, how can it change? And this gets into open system versus closed system. In a closed system, momentum is conserved. Uh, delta capital P is equal to zero. In an open system, we can have changes. In a closed system, sort of a crude definition, we are con considering all objects I guess all objects with influence open system we're not so I slide this roll of tape across the table if I consider just the roll of tape it is an open system because it is interacting with the table and I said the system was just the roll of tape if I consider the tape and the table, that is potentially a closed system. We might have to also involve the earth. And so ultimately, if you start getting into real nitpicky stuff, you, your system actually really starts expanding more and more. So sometimes the problem is given so that it's obvious what the system is, that I'm just going to look at these two things colliding, for example. And there's also the issue of, uh, at some point, what can you, when can you just go, I really don't care about it. Those forces are so tiny, I don't care. <clears throat> Questions to hear before we work through a problem. Now, some students in the past have had issues of when do you actually use conservation of energy, when do you use conservation of momentum. Here's a big hint. If there's a collision involved, momentum. So let's do a collision. Start up with just the simple case of I've got a five kilogram mass going to the right at three meters per second. I have a six kilogram mass going to the left at, uh, let's just say, two meters per second. So a collision between two masses, not between like a string, because would that be a collision when it goes through the string? Um, it would be a collision. The issue you would run into that is, or if we're dealing with an ideal spring, it really doesn't have any mass. So. That, that would sort of throw that off. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to might amend that bit in the future. Valid point. So let's just start out simply. We're going to, I'm going to call this mass 5 and mass 6. So the momentum of mass 5 is what? Fifteen what? Newton by <laughs> Something has just been done that perhaps people are aware of or not, but it will now become clear what was just done. What's the momentum of the six kilogram mass? Twelve. No. Negative twelve. Negative twelve. As soon as 15 was announced as the momentum of the first mass. That set our direction as to the right is positive. Direction matters. We are dealing with vectors here.
I'm not writing capital D to encourage you to follow me on that. I'm writing capital D just because I don't like writing kilogram meters per second or newton seconds. These are deep, dark scars from my childhood. I don't want to do it. This physicists were cruel. What is my total initial momentum? I think some of you think you know the answer, and you're probably right what the answer is. Just three B. Yep. Just Adam. Uh, I didn't state this explicitly. This is a one-dimensional problem. Uh, part of that is implied here when I assign the direction just as a positive instead of, instead of using I hat. It is a one-dimensional problem. They will collide and they will do something after the collision still within that line. What's the total final momentum? Mm -hmm. Yep. So whatever happens during the collision, we don't know, but we can make some prediction about what's gonna happen afterwards. And so now it comes down to what kind of collision is it? We'll get into some specifics in just a second. So let's just assume for right now that the five kilogram mass is gonna bounce back at, uh, we'll say four meters per second. The six kilogram mass is going to do something. So let's figure out what that something is. And then we'll figure out if this is realistic. I know the total. Uh, what's the momentum of this? So this is oh, this is the initial. Initial. T. T five final. Is. No. Did I miss here? You said negative four? Uh, no, excuse me, twice? Um, Worth those two no, together. Let me just be quiet. Oh, negative <laughs> 20. Yeah, you're right. Negative 20. Negative 20, okay. So what is the momentum of this? This is 73. That might be going that way. Uh, uh, I mean, I oh, know that must be positive in this way. Oh, sorry. Yeah, positive. Yeah. So I think some facts was used, or somebody said it. Yeah, 23. 20, 20, 20, 20. 23. So the momentum of six was final, plus the momentum of five final is equal to three. And so T6 final plus negative 20 equals three. T6 final is equal to 23 Descartes or kilogram meters per second or newton seconds or newton second radians. And so that's equal to the mass times its final velocity. And so final velocity of the five kilogram uh, six kilogram mass is 3.18. So we don't know what happened during the collision. While they're touching each other, we don't know how force varied uh, during that, but we can with momentum, the power of momentum is that we can predict what's gonna happen afterwards. Questions to hear before we talk about if this is realistic or not. And I'm gonna say right now it's not. All right, so let's take a look at the energy involved. It's all on one level here. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no planet involved that, you know, this is just the universe with these two masses heading towards each other, serving the purpose of colliding and producing a problem. 
But I want to know what is the total energy initially and then the total energy final. Kinetic energy. Well, the total is just the sum of the two, so it's one half times five times three squared plus one half times six times two squared. That's the initial. Verse final. One half times five times four squared plus one half times I did say four, yeah. Times six times three point eight three squared. Uh, what are what units go with the 34.5 and the 84? Yes. I think I heard you correctly. So what happened in this collision? Their kinetic energy got higher. Yeah. Somehow we gained energy. Life does not work that way. Not unless we planted an explosive in the middle. So this is not a realistic problem. Textbooks have a, a word for it of impossible. I have a different word for it, lumberesque. So let's talk about the different types of collisions and what people call them. And it all comes down to, in the collision, we have momentum conserved, but what kind of collision is it depends upon the kinetic energy. So if the change in kinetic energy is zero, this is going to be naming convention number one. 